In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And welcome to our virtual Mass this day, celebrating the third Sunday of Easter. As we gather together as God's people virtually, let us take a moment first to call to mind our sins, and let us ask God for his love, his mercy, and his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exulted. My flesh too will dwell in hope because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct handed on by your ancestors not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping 
that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all of this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all of the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. And with that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him but he vanished from their sight. And then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the 11 and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. We were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. That single sad sentence summarizes everything Cleopas and his traveling companion had been talking about as they traveled the road to Emmaus. It is the evening of the resurrection. These two had heard the news that Jesus was alive. They had not, however, seen evidence of the resurrection, so they did not know what to believe. What they had seen were the painful events of Good Friday. What they did know was the numbing sadness that followed, and they were going home. They were walking along not noticing other travelers or anything else as they passed their heads bowed. They were deeply engrossed in a discussion about all that had happened over the last few days in regard to the man who had given them hope for the future. But now he was dead. His body was reported disappeared from the tomb. There were even rumors that he had rose from the dead. They were sad. They were puzzled. They were fearful all at the same time. But most of all, they felt sorry for themselves. It's not hard to imagine that as they walked away from Jerusalem, they were turning their backs on hope, just as surely they believed that their God had turned a back to them. We were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. 
And then they share their sadness with a mysterious traveler now walking with them. And we learn about their loss of hope. They had believed that Jesus was a prophet, that God's power was at work through him. And just as God redeemed Israel in the past, freed them from their slavery in Egypt and gave Israel new life, these two, together with countless followers of Jesus, looked for that same new life and freedom through him and in him. What made Jesus' crucifixion so distressing was not just that he had died. What made the crucifixion so heartbreaking was that if Jesus were the one to redeem Israel, he should have been defeating the Roman authorities, not dying at their hands. To them, a crucified Messiah was a failed Messiah. We were hoping. When Cleopas and his companions speak their sadness, we are drawn into their story. When people find themselves enduring their own painful times, this gospel story gives words for all who hear themselves saying, I was hoping. Here is an expression of our own deep personal sadness. I was hoping. I had dreams about my life, about my relationships, about my job, my children, my health, about where they were all going. But it just hasn't turned out as I had imagined. This story draws us in whenever we believe that God has turned his back on us. Whenever we find ourselves traveling with Cleopas and his companion through a dark evening. Whenever their words become ours. I was hoping. Yet as we carry deep pain and sadness, the risen Christ is walking with us to give new life and refreshed sense of hope. The gospel says, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all of the scriptures. The risen Christ opens their minds and hearts to the scriptures and to the way God is at work in the world to how God takes the chaos before creation and makes the beautiful Garden of Eden, to how God looked at human rebellion resulting in the flood and leading to the Tower of Babel and responds by calling Abraham to be a blessing to all nations, to how God hears the cries of Israel in Egypt and frees them to how God restores life after the pain and punishment of the exile, to how God's own Messiah takes the world's sin and suffering upon himself on the cross and rises with forgiveness and new life for the world. Beginning with Moses and the prophets, the biblical word speaks of God at work in human suffering, in our suffering, and transforming it to bring new life and hope. And then there is the meal. Luke says of Cleopas and his companion, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. With the phrase, their eyes were opened, Luke is taking us back to the third chapter of Genesis. Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the tree, and the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. It was that meal of rebellion that started the world heading in the wrong direction. And now this meal of redemption has set the world back in the right direction with the risen Christ. 
hearing Jesus in the scriptures and knowing Jesus in the breaking of the bread, their eyes were opened and they recognized the risen Christ. And no, God had not turned a back on their suffering, but is present in word and in sacrament to give new life, to give refreshed hope. The risen Christ does not leave us in our sorrow or sadness, but he accompanies us in it and leads us through it. The Gospel of Luke is without a doubt telling the story of Cleopas and his companion in order to permit us to find our place within the Easter story, a very poignant place this year in particular the biblical word and the meal where Jesus took bread and said the blessing and broke it and gave it to them is echoed by what we do here in this place today. By God's word proclaimed among us and his sacrament of grace where bread is blessed and given, our redemption forgiveness, new life, and hope. Amen. And together we now proudly profess our faith in God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the church, we now gather together our needs, our prayers, and our petitions, offering them to our Holy Father. For the church, May all those who have been called to the role of shepherd closely follow the example of Jesus Christ and bear witness to his goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, may government leaders work together to ensure the well-being of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For medical professionals, first responders, and all those who care for the needs of our community at great personal risk during this global health crisis, may God bless them and keep them safe, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the thousands of people needing assistance from the various ministries supported by the 2020 Archbishop's Annual Appeal, growing in faith, giving, and love. May their needs be met. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the faithful of the Archdiocese of Hartford, may we know the peace of the Lord that banishes all fear. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. 
for Patricia Conrad and the intentions the people wish to have remembered at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and especially at this Mass, for Michael F. Connor. May all those who died in the hope of the kingdom of heaven be purified by the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in a special way for all of those who protect our country, our freedoms, our way of life, those serving us around the globe in our armed forces, and those on the front lines here at home, serving us in our hospitals, our nursing homes, caring for those who are sick in very difficult times. For all of those who are caregivers, we ask the Lord's healing presence to work through them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And for quality vocations to lead our church, that we may always be aware of our responsibility to encourage them through our prayer and by our example. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. Good and gracious God, be attentive to our needs, our prayers this day, and as always, answer them according to your holy will. And all this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all is holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them, we up, lift to them the up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, it is and, right just. and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. And therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers and the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed us in your own image and entrusted the whole world to our care so that in serving you alone, the creator, we might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience we had lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered us covenants, and through the prophets taught us to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit, And born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. And to accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. story of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your your servant, Pope Francis, and Leonard, our bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people and all who seek you with a sincere heart. 
Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. And to all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, thy be thy name. Thy kingdom thy come, come, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day, day our daily day bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we as forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Thanks for joining us for this liturgy today, and we hope that all of you will be safe and healthy, and we look forward to the day that we can all rejoin one another here at the beautiful Cathedral of St. Joseph. May God bless you all. Mm -hmm.